Okay, we are live and it is 1115. So, wow, I am on time. No tech problems so far. Touch wood, lots of wood around here. Um, and it is our eighth show which is kind of is great in a lot of ways because yesterday was 8 8 august 8th or 8 august if you're in britain and so that's the symbol of infinity and that's supposedly a lot of power around that um it's also if you count our pre-show our sort of rehearsal show it's the ninth show and the ninth show is the end of a cycle oh there's some people i'm gonna i'm gonna get um I'm going to learn to wave and, and do all of these things to try and figure out the technology because, again, it's the end of the cycle and I should learn this by now. Ah, but that's a stress thing and we're going to talk about that. So instead of having, oh, see, I reminded myself just with that intake of breath that the first thing that you do when you wake up in the morning, before you do anything, before you start work, is breathe. <sighs> Inspirate and suspirate. And I learned yesterday the suspirate part is the sigh and that it's a very sacred sound, um, like through eternity. So if you're, uh, you have to let go and let it out to let the fresh ideas, to let the fresh life, to let the fresh everything in. Ohio gazimus, almost forgot that. Go back to another show to see why I say that. So today we don't have a particular theme. It is a recap show. And the reason it's a recap show is for the reason that I mentioned uh, about stress. Um, and because I don't want this to be a stressful thing, it's quick and clean, right? And the reason it's not quick, quick and dirty is because I'm sick of that. Uh, I'm sick of all of that, you know, the secret surprise of whatever to get people to watch the clickbait thing. Um, uh, and I also, I had this very, clear idea of of what I want to talk about today, which I still do, don't worry, but I don't write anything down. So I, I got an article early this morning about the change in countries and everything that we've gone through these last five, six months, however long it's been. And it made me think about arrogance. And I'm, I'm gonna, I don't know, I feel like I'm gonna cry a little bit here, but, um, a lot of things have been tethered to arrogance and the language of violence. You know, he's killing it. She's slaying it. And we, we say this stuff almost unconsciously. And we are in this culture of violence. And I think as we have learned to appreciate essential workers, appreciate what is essential, appreciate nature has, has gotten a big boon in this whole thing. And Shakespeare to me is the nature of wisdom. And so um, let's be done with all of that. You know, if we're gonna uh, let out these, let out some stuff, let go of some stuff to let the fresh ideas in, to let the fresh life in, to recalibrate, to re-inspirate ourselves. Let's maybe think about jettisoning some things that don't don't work for us and maybe never worked. We thought that arrogance is a sign of power, but actually it's a sign of insecurity, isn't it? It's a blustery, bloviating, bombastic, Shakespeare would say, thing. So anyway, <laughs> on that note, I think I'm gonna, this is Botanical Shakespeare. I'm Garrett Quayley, the author. And the reason I, I do this is um, to help people anchor in wisdom anchor in the healing aspects of nature. I went to a talk this week on Zoom, of course, that uh, that said we haven't even unlocked the beginnings of what nature and these herbs and all of these things can do, you know? And I always refer to that line from Tom Stoppard. It's, it's great to be at the get beginning when everything you thought you knew is wrong and you could start over. So uh, recap show, I am kind of recapping as we go. The reason I wanted to do a recap show is because I didn't want you to feel stressed about learning the line, but I realized I hadn't really given you any help as far as how to learn that line, you know, or why, as I've said, is rhythm and uh, is um, wisdom and also the rhythm helps you learn it. You probably know more than you think. So I thought, okay, recap shows. So 
I used to be on a soap opera in the Neolithic age, and we had to do these recap shows every few months for people who had missed it, who actually went to work and stuff like that. And so it would be like, but daddy, why do I have to take out the trash when mother died and grandma was locked in the attic and my husband fell off a cliff and returned with my chauffeur and the butler died in the surveillance room because I don't feel like taking out the trash. So, so she had to like cram all this stuff into a line to catch everybody up within like some pretext of <laughs> what the scene was. So much fun, not that easy to do. And um, so I was thinking, rather than give you another line of the day, although I did have a little one, is how to do that. Um, particularly if you're not used to doing that. Again, it helps your memory. My mother has dementia. The thing is, you, you don't want to lose your memory and and concentration because we're all, get, you know, you can't even watch a YouTube video anymore. They pop up with ads in the middle of it. And anytime you're trying to read an article, there's pop-up stuff. So your concentration is sorely challenged. So just learning one line a week is gonna help sharpen that. And um, and how you can do it is like, just write it on a little card. If you're Sailor, Sarah Palin, you can write it on your hand. Um, and and just say it once a day, sleep that, that knits up the raveled sleeve of care. And, and you know, work it into your, daily life somebody goes oh god i didn't get enough sleep last night and you go sleep knits up the raveled sleeve of care feeling kind of like a raveled sleeve today are you you know oh i got such great sleep sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care i'm getting fog on my glasses um uh, I was thinking, so then I thought, how many did I actually memorize? Now, granted, I knew a couple already. This bud of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Okay, this, the, and I said you can use it for other things. So I, summer's ripening breath, you know, because like, oh my God, it's so hot out. Summer's ripening breath. You know, just th throw it in there. Um, or at the end of a meeting, Zoom meeting now, this bud of whatever it is, whatever the idea or the topic is of your meeting, by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we Zoom. You can adapt. Um, so I, I went through this little list of, so those are all the lines. I just wrote them down to see if I, how much I remembered. And I forgot one. And I forgot the one that from last week, which was um, the cricket sing. And the reason I remember that is because we always go crickets when you get no response to something. The crickets sing and man's or labored sense. So, and that's what I'm talking about, all these things coming at us all the time, repairs itself by rest. And one of the things that you can do, aside from writing it on the card and saying it once a day, is, and in a week you'll have it because they're short. And like I said, weaving it into your everyday life, but um, raveled sleeve has the two V's. Man's over la or labored sense, first of all, crickets. You remember that? And then or labored sense repairs itself by rest. You've got the alliteration of the R's. Then um, the first one I did is, um... <laughs> see what I mean? <laughs> um, um, okay, I can't even remember because I'm stressing and stress always seem like this thing, oh, stress is this terrible thing, and we kind of discount it. But actually, you know, it's the cause of so many diseases, and and it's the cause of memory loss a lot of times, and and all those things. So we breathe, and we, um, oh, what a piece of work is man, see? Oh, what a piece of work. So that's something that we say all the time. Oh, he, he's a piece of work, she's a piece of work is man or woman, how noble in reason, how infinite in faculty. And the reason that we do the herbs and that I'm so lucky to find Hannah Sylvester, who's there and is the district herbalist in Lincoln, Lincolnshire. Of what I was saying about these herbs, we, we had a viewer who's on today who noticed after the show that, um, that mint does have a square stem. And so there's these things that you can suddenly have this personal relationship with, with herbs and also know how they can help you. And this was the medicine cabinet in the 16th century, right? 
So, and they're all around us. So, hello, Hannah. Welcome. Nice bookcase. <laughs> anyway, so in addition to going through these lines, and just write down and see how many you remember, and we will put a list of all the things that have been the line of the day since, um, since we started the show. So it's only eight or nine. Um, and Hannah, we're, we were just going to go back over some of the herbs that we covered because in last week's show we talked about hemp and hemp is on holiday and and they have a lot of uh practical application for that i have some i forgot to bring it over here but i got some more hemp at the farmer's market so you're very lucky if you have a farmer's market near you that carries this stuff because as tammy said it's more nutrient dense than nettles so it does smell funny though i mean let's face it and um <laughs> And, and Hannah did that onion syrup recipe for us in the show before that for the throat tickle. So we thought we'd go back and do a little recipes for some of the herbs that we've already covered and how to recognize them. So the other thing is when you have this personal relationship with nature, you know, I found these acorns just, you know, walking around and here's the leaf and there's the acorn. It looks almost like Sumier's drawing which is A, so it's in the very beginning. And a reader sent us a mistake in one of the quotes, so that was actually really nice to be able to correct that. And peaches are in the farmer's market, so Hannah, we should talk about peaches at some point. But I don't have my mint here. And I, oh, I snipped this, and one of the things we're gonna talk about is chamomile. So Hannah, did you get that picture that I sent you, the close-up picture? I did, but I still couldn't quite see it. The the thing that's going to really, um, oh, just a tiny little bit, if you can get one of the flowers just a little bit closer. Um, no, wiggling. Get a I, I don't think it is. Or if it is, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a variety. Because the thing that you're looking for with, with chamomile is that obviously it's got though that, that beautiful sort of you know sort of daisy kind of arrangement of, of white petals and that lovely yellow center but um the way to um identify chamomile obviously the smell if you if you crush the flowers do they smell okay. of anything on the one that you've got really no. So Bill, you're, what you'll get with chamomile is a real kind of very heady, aromatic kind of scent coming through. But the really easy way of telling if it is chamomile is if you put your fingernail and if you split the, the flower in two, right down the middle of that, that lovely yellow centre. And if you see, um, once you split it, a little arch with a hollow in the centre of that yellow arch, if it's got the hollow, it's chamomile. If it hasn't, it's something else that's pretending to be chamomile. Aha, this is the pre chamomile pretender. <laughs> um, okay, so so that's really helpful to split it in half, see the arch uh, and a little hollow. And, and so this thing was growing along the bus lane out there. That's the other concern about foraging. If, I, if, if, if it were chamomile and I brought it inside, can we can we really forage? How do I clean it? Do I just submerge it in water, and is that going to be okay? Well, I mean that that's the difficulty with um, with plants that are that are growing near near human populations, really. Um, you know, whether it be in the countryside or or in the city, because plants will suck up any air from the surrounding area. So if it's at a bus stop there's going to be traffic going nearby and if there's going to be traffic there's going to be fumes from vehicles so it's not going to be it's not going to be great the, the plant can still live really quite helpfully healthily but mm -hmm. for us humans we're going to be we're going to be ingesting some of the nastiness that comes from that fumes so mm -hmm. if you can pick something away so you know maybe if you're allowed to pick in a in a public park um mm -hmm. or if you know you're growing things on your balcony or in your garden or you know if it's trees that you're picking from if they're in a nice area and you're allowed to pick from them that's the place to go as long as it's away from car fumes or um yeah and or if it's um, um if it's in the countryside, if it's away from areas where crops might have been sprayed with um, pesticides and that kind of thing. Right, so all those things that the plants are then ingesting, 
you know, we're ingesting that too. Something to think about. But thank you. So, so this will be lovely to stick in my uh, bouquet of roses that I already have. But I'm not going to eat it. Also, it's not chamomile. So, okay. So, uh, what else can we do with chamomile? I we talk about making tea. I talked about that in the episode where we covered chamomile. But is there other things that we can do with it besides tea? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it kind of links back to that 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 sort of tea infusion idea, but it's using it in a slightly different way. So, um, two really nice things that you can do with chamomile in particular, because it's because it's anti-inflammatory and it's calming and it's soothing and it's wound healing as well, which is really helpful um, yeah. for it. Um, for a real practical application, if you have mouth ulcers, for example, or if you have a sore mouth or sore gums. You can make an infusion from chamomile and then instead of drinking it, you can actually use it as a mouthwash and give it a real good kind of oh. and then spit it out, obviously. And then just if you, you can do that for as long as you have the mouth ulcer. So that's a really lovely, easy thing to do with it. But then the other main fantastic use that chamomile has is on the skin. And for any skin that's inflamed and red and itchy, so like, you know, that really itchy red eczema that, that some people can get. Mm. Just something as simple. If you've got fresh chamomile growing, great. If you've got dry chamomile, great. What you can do is essentially put it into your bath. Or yeah. if you haven't got a bath, put some in a sock and tie the end of the sock up. Um, if the sock's got a hole in it, that's not going to be any good, but as long as it's a nice, <laughs> nice no, 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 hole in it. I'm holding socks. And then you, can, then you can use it in the shower and just, just rub it over the skin. Mm. Once you've got washed in the shower, rub it over the skin and then leave it on there and then just, mm -hmm. just pat it dry. And then it will take down the inflammation and heal the skin. That's fantastic. Yeah, so there's all these things like yes, you don't want to get it in a in a in a bus lane, but cheaper than than stores. We had a lot of stores closed during this whole pandemic. You want to find things that you can remedy yourself. And chamomile grows in the grass, really, and that's what the line is in Shakespeare: that the more you you trod on it, the the stronger it gets. Falstaff says that. So it's a great you know kind of weed, really. That's almost anywhere so what was the other one i think we talked about was it mallow or was it uh linden linden yeah linden is another another one that we were talking about i think in the same episode that you know whilst you can you can drink it as an infusion and it's very calming and very soothing um one thing that's really easy to do with with linden or, or lime or tilia um as, as the latin is you you use the flowers and the bracts um and they're picked in sort of may june time depending on how the season's going mm -hmm. and all you need to make a, a preparation that's going to last you for the whole year is an empty jar so an empty sterile jam jar or marmalade jar or whatever you've got mm -hmm. place your um either your fresh or your dried um lime flowers in the jar then pour vodka over the top and just give it a little shake just to get the air bubbles out, if there's any air bubbles there. Pop the lid on it and then put it in a cupboard for about two or three weeks. But okay. every couple of days, you need to take it out of the cupboard and give it a little shake just to sort of just to make sure all the area is getting nicely covered. And at the end of that two weeks, um, strain it off keep the lovely um, lime infused vodka that you have, pop it in a bottle. And then what you've got is you've got your own very calming, relaxing, tension relieving vodka, which you can have um, half a teaspoon, <laughs> two a teaspoon of, twice a day, small dose, twice a day as your as your medicinal tipple a true medicinal tipple that will just mm -hmm. take to take down any sort of any sort of residual anxiety and tension and it's beautiful it's so sweet oh cool well okay but would we use it in a martini or, i mean 
I mean, it's vodka. What's actually relaxing us there? Is it the linden <laughs> or is it the vodka? It's, it's the linden. So you're, you're, the alcohol is acting as the as the extractant, so the menstruum, as it's called. So the alcohol is helped, just like just like water helps um, herbs to extract into the water. The vodka helps to get more of those lovely constituents out, but it also helps it to keep. So you can keep that for Whoa. two, three years. A preservative. Okay. Um, oh, that's fantastic. Okay. And so, and what was the last one we decided to do a recap of? Yeah, the last one was was Mallow. Um, so oh. Malva, uh, Malva Sylvestris. Um, and Mallow is quite yeah, a, it's quite an onomatopoeic word. It's Mallow. It's very soothing and very. The thing about Mallows is they're cooling and they're soothing and they're moistening. And that's 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 where their strength lies because they contain lots of what are called mucilages, and it's those are the actions that, that have those um, those effects. So the lovely thing to do with mallow, apart from making beautiful mallow tea, is um, you can make a great poultice from the leaves. Mm -hmm. So as long as you've got a nice nice leaf that's that's picked away from. Um, picked away from um, car, cars or anywhere where there's going to be any kind of pollutants on it, pick the leaf. And mm -hmm. if you have any swelling on the skin, so if you've been bitten by an insect or if you've got a, a boil or an abscess that you think is going to start to play up, you can pick the leaf. If you want to chew it, you can chew it and then spit it out and then put it on the, uh, oh. the area that's affected. Or yeah. you can chop it up fairly finely pop it on the area that's the problem, then put a sticking plaster over the top or a bandage, and yeah. that will help to draw out um, basically the gunk that's underneath the skin, but and also to remove it and to soothe it. Right. So this is this is our natural pharmacy, and maybe it takes a little bit more patience than, you know, popping an aspirin or whatever, but, um, but you do have natural alternatives. It's so funny to me that they call it alternative medicine, when in fact it was the first medicine, and the other stuff, the chemical-y stuff, should be the alternative. You know what I mean? And, and that's your sort of soap opera recap show um, coming from my long tradition. So thank you, Hannah. And we'll, um, we'll give you all the lines of the day. And you can decide which one you want to memorize or not. No stress. Stress is, stress is the anti-health. And we're going towards holistic happiness, health, and all of that. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.